You want to be a better animator, right? So why not study some of the legendary Disney animators? That's exactly what this flipbook analysis video uh, and the entire series will do. And we're going to start today with Ub Iwerks. Check it out. During Christmas, I received an amazing nerdy animation gift. The Nine Moral Men flip books. Each flip book has a scene from an amazing animator. Watch, it's awesome. So cool. And one of the first thoughts that I had besides my precious was what if I did an analysis series on all the animation that's in these flipbooks? You know, every Disney scene is packed with tons of animation lessons, probably stuff that I've never even seen before or realized. And it would be cool to also, you know, learn more about these legendary animators in the process, especially since I'm not a Disney historian and you're probably not either. So if you're up for studying legendary animators to get better, let's dive in. Now, as I said, we'll be taking a look at the animations in the Nine Old Men flip books by Pete Docter. But if you don't know who the Nine Old Men are, here they are. These guys are largely responsible for the animation of many of the Disney classics like Pinocchio, Sleeping Beauty, and Jungle Book. You know, they raised animation to soaring new heights, uh, and they're arguably the greatest animators who have ever lived. In future flipbook analyses, we'll be talking more about all of these guys, but now let's just zero in on two of them. Frank and Ollie. You probably know these guys. Brad Bird featured them in The End of Incredibles, and you probably also recognize this book, The Illusion of Life. Frank and Ollie wrote it. Yes, it's these guys who passed on the 12 principles of animation to you. What you probably don't know is that Frank and Ollie and the rest of the Nine Old Men were not the first animators to arrive at Disney. There were some other animators that came before them that they looked up to and they learned from. Ollie, in fact, referred to four of them as the four gods. I'm talking about Norm Ferguson, Ham Lusk, Freddie Moore, and Bill Titla. These animators aren't often mentioned, but this is where Pete Docter's new flipbooks come in, the Nine More Old Men. These Nine More Old Men are Ub Iwerks, Norm Ferguson, Ham Lusk, Art Babbitt, Grim Natwick, Bill Titla, John Sibley, Hal King, and Freddie Moore. These men were some of the earliest pioneers in animation, so we're gonna start this flipbook series here at the beginning with some of the very first Walt Disney animations and try to infer and digest all of the lessons that they were learning through every scene. Then we'll work our way up through history to see how animation has evolved with the other set of flipbooks. And there's no better animator to start with really than Ub Iwerks. You could say Ub is the father of Walt Disney animation. After all, he was responsible for designing Mickey Mouse. Some amazing facts about Ub. He met Walt Disney at 19, and he became one of his closest friends and business partners. He was an animator as well as an inventor who designed a lot of the effects for Walt Disney's attractions like Pirates of the Caribbean. Walt actually said without Ub, there wouldn't be a Mickey Mouse. Ollie Johnston said he was the finest animator of that period. And Chuck Jones, the man behind Looney Tunes said that Ub got him interested in animation. He animated all of the first Mickey Mouse cartoons by himself, turning out some 600 drawings a day, including for Plain Crazy that was made in 1928, which is the animation that we're gonna dig into today. We're not gonna watch all of it. We're just gonna focus around the section that the flipbook covers. And here's that flipbook. And I'll quickly flip this so you can see the drawings. Pretty cool. Now let's look at the animation.
What do you notice? Here's what I notice. Yes, it's crude. The, the weight and the lead and follow are lacking. But this is nine years before Snow White. Nine years after the automobile had been invented. The 12 principles of animation didn't exist. Ub couldn't play back his animation in Maya. It's just one man drawing on paper using his imagination. Pretty amazing. Three key takeaways stand out for me. One, it's super inventive. So like Mickey here is walking on air. She, Minnie reacts normally. She jumps more like a normal person. And then Mickey is walking on air defying gravity, completely confused about the, or shocked by the situation, not paying attention to what he's doing. And then he freaks out, which is a great moment for the audience to laugh at the ridiculousness of the cartoon because it's doing things that they couldn't obviously have ever achieved in live action. Uh, the only thing that, they, that, that people at this time would see in a movie theater usually is live action. So these cartoons are relatively new. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, there's also, you know, if we skip ahead back here, there's also a really cool part where he hits the ground with his head and you, Ub uses a puff of smoke to flip him 180 degrees. And it happens in the blink, blink of an eye. So you don't even really notice it happening. And it's kind of humorous how he squashed his head into the body. It's really thinking outside the box there. Very, very inventive. And that kind of leads me to my next point too, because it's, it, that, that is humorous. Uh, overall, Ub really focused on entertainment here. Uh, you know, the cycle of him coming down this, this tree. The repetitiveness of it, the fact that he hits so many branches and all these parts are in the air and the way that he hits these branches, the, the, how we get to see his pain and agony. Uh, very clearly, there's a pause for us to read what's happening. And then, you know, the mayhem continues uh, is really entertaining, uh, especially if you're taking in context again, that it, this is 1929. So, you know, and then, and then um, takes it to, to another level going back to what we talked about squashing that head in the body. And finally, everything kind of has come down and landed after Mickey. And the last thing to arrive and hit him in the head is of course the horseshoe for the crescendo on the entertainment. Number three, it's really using 3D space. Many animators today don't use 3D space that well. Often their animations just move left or to the right. They don't come forward and backward and side to side and you know up and down. They don't use all of the room with the camera. So he's really uh, doing a great job here for 1929 to really use his space and think in three dimensions, even though he's just using paper. This horseshoe is a great example, actually. So it comes forward, bounces here, whirls on that spot very nicely. And of course, Ub is having to think about how this looks in 3D from every angle in his head. And then at the end, where he throws the horseshoe, you really see how he's thinking about the 3D space, right? He throws it. And yeah, physics wise, it's a bit, it feels weird, but he's, you know, really thinking about using this fake distance to his advantage and he's shrinking the shape as it goes away. And then the, the ridiculous humor again comes back full circle to make this funny. And we see some early stages of, of lead and follow too, where this horseshoe is really pulling Mickey around. So we're seeing some, uh, you know, really clever understanding of, of physics at this stage in animation without the 12 principles. Okay, for the first analysis, we'll wrap it there. Thank you so much for watching. Those were my key takeaways from playing Crazy by of iWorks. Next, we'll take a look at Norm Fergus's animation of Pluto, which comes six years after. The animation is a lot more complex, so I'm sure you'll learn even more 
uh, that you can apply into your own animations. If you like this video, then subscribe and ring the bell for more like this in the future. One quick question for you. Of everything that I shared, what stood out to you the most? Was it how Ub animated all this by himself, which is a pretty crazy history fact? Was it how inventive his ideas were, like Mickey walking on air or the puff of smoke and he's flipping 180 degrees? Or was it something else? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you and chat with you about it. Until next time, feel free to check out my God of War animation analysis or another animation video. Happy animating.